beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord that was, that is, that shall be forevermore, the only wise God, Father, we worship you. Lord, I exalt you. Lord, we give you glory. We reference you, Lord. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Among the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Hallelujah. Can we take that song as we worship the Almighty God? We are back at Sete Rege. 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 Lord, let our heavens be open. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege to be here. Thank you for what you are going to say to us. We are attentive, Lord. Father, open our heart. Open our understanding. Speak to, the, oh, to each and every one of us in a language you can understand. Let our joy be full. Let your name be glorified. Let this word profit us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Praise God. If you are saying hallelujah, say it very well. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, choir. Put your hands together for godly hears. Put your hands together for godly hears. God bless you, choir. Amen. We give God all the glory. It is a great privilege to be here again this morning and to be able to share with us uh, the little that God has uh, put upon our heart. Actually, when Pastor was I came on board. I, I was thinking I had my discussion with uh, Mrs. Ogunino last week that she was standing this morning. And then when he started the introduction, I was wondering who he was introducing. <laughs> Amen. Our God is good. Let me start on this note. Pastor gave us an assignment last week, our national office here. How many people remember? Only two people. Very good. How many people did the assignment? Oh, okay. Three people. Okay. How many people did the assignment? If you did the stand up. Only two people. Hmm. Only two people did the assignment. Okay. Let me give Mrs. George microphone and give Pastor Mosu, Mrs. Mosu microphone. What was the assignment, Mrs. George? 
names of God. How many did you get? 30. 38. Okay, before we come to you, let us go to Pastor Mrs. Amoso. <laughs> how many, mommy, how many did you get, ma? 16. Praise God. Mommy, read out your own 16. Covenant names of God. Elohim, God of Israel. Adonai, the Lord is present. El Shaddai, God Almighty. The I am that I am. Jah, Abba, Elion, God Almighty Creator. Jehovah Jireh, Lord our Provider. Jehovah Shammah, God has not God has not abandoned Jerusalem. Then Shalom, Mekodishekem, Sabaoth, Ra, Nisi, Lord Abana, Yahweh, Elolam, everlasting God. Jehovah Rohi, God our shepherd. Jehovah Se Sedekeno, God our righteousness. Make, Makadesh, God our holiness. Jehovah Rapha, God our healer. Jehovah, the name of God of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's come back to Mrs. George because I don't want her to have finished reading everything. Her mommy will say she has read everything. Praise God. Jehovah Elirum, God who sees me. Behold, Jehovah Erakim. God of mercy, a merciful God, Emmanuel, God with us, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peaceful, Jehovah and Nekema, God is our comfort, Jehovah me, me Fati, the Lord my deliverer, the Jehovah and Yeshua. I think I, I think I should ask you to stop because of our time. Can you do me a favor? Can you write it out? Uh, for the media team to post on the group chat. Praise God. Did anybody do the assignment again? If you do the assignment, raise up your hand. No other person. What about those online? Media team, did anybody do the assignment online? Nobody. Praise God. What is 38 plus 16? Brother Emmanuel, you will see me out for 54,000 naira. You are going to give them according to the number of names they found. <laughs> Praise God. So 38,000 to Mrs. George and 16,000 to Mommy Amoso. <laughs> Next time, when you are given an assignment, you will do it. The day of your reward, you do not know it. Are you hearing me? And that is where I'm starting today's message from. The title of this word I'm sharing with you is Just a Little Bit More. Can you hear me? Can you say after me, Just a Little Bit More? Just a Little Bit More. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. We'll start from there. do not intend that we will stay so long because I think I'm going to do like um, my dear brother did the other day. Can somebody please help me with this fan? You can turn it to the back. It's making it difficult for me to concentrate because I want to read from my own Bible too. I'm sure for this one day we will ask everybody to raise up their Bible. And those who are raising up their phone, we will see what we will do for them. Amen. Amen. Simon Peter, no, that's verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Verse 8. 
For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to read verse 9 also. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was pushed from his old sin. Maybe we should just go to verse 11. I mean, finish verse 11. But we won't have time to take all of them. But for context, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. We're going to be talking about perseverance and patience. And when I was meditating on this, on the dimension God will have me go, it told me clearly. Just tell my people to hold on just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. The circumstances around you are enough to squeeze life out of you if they have the capacity. The challenges you have, you face every moment, everywhere, every now and then are enough to snuff faith out of you if they have the capacity. The things that people say in your presence and even in your absence are more than enough to discourage you and make you abandon faith. The failed expectations from senior people, from elders, from family, from friends, they are enough to puncture whatever faith you hold in high esteem. But I tell you this something today, brethren. God does not work like that. God does not work like that. God deals with you as an individual. God deals with you as a person. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your coming and your going. He knows your challenges and your difficulties. The challenges you are yet going to have, he knew about it. Well ahead. And so he's asking me to tell you to hold on just a little bit more. Praise God. Is asking me to tell you, brother, sister, to hold on just a little bit more. That is the summary of all I'm going to say today. What does it mean to persevere? It means to be steadfast, to persist in a state or condition even in the midst of opposition. You want to achieve this thing and you're working hard about it and yet there are several people, several things, several issues that are opposing the flow of the grace upon you to achieve that thing. But in the midst of that opposition, in the midst of the failures, in the midst of the discouragement, you are able to continue to push on. Like we say in those days, you keep keeping on in spite of oppositions. That is perseverance. The honest thing about perseverance is that it has no end point. Somebody says just persevere a little bit more. And then you move on a little bit. And then you say, I have reached the limit. And then you say, no, still persevere a little bit more. And that is where patience comes in.
you need patience to be able to hold on. You need patience to continue to do what is expected of you even in the midst of discouragement. You need patience to remain humble when you are profound. Because if care is not taken, those things that you have bottled up all over time will take hold of you except God helps you. Here, Brother Peter was admonishing us like we have been saying from the time of the convention. We have been told that we are called. No debate about that. What were we called to? We were called to glory. We were called to fashion. And we have all these in abundance. If you start from first three that we have read repeatedly of Second Peter chapter 1, he said, according as his divine power had given unto us how many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us unto glory and fashion. You have the knowledge. You have been called. You know it. You understand it. You know your purpose. It's well written out. It's well defined. But if things are not working the way you planned. Your expectations kept failing every day. Look at verse 4. He said, We are by are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know the precious promises. You have confessed them. You have proclaimed them. You have fasted because of them. You have prayed. You have gone to mountains from first to second to seven mountains to nine mountains, wherever, whatever name they call it. You have almost become a prostitute of religion. They answer, God is answering in this place you run there. God is answering in that place you run there as if God is no longer omnipresent. As if God is no longer omniscient. You are looking for a solution by all means. Unfortunately, the Bible is saying there are some things you need to add to this knowledge. If you do not, first nine says you are blind. If you do not, the Bible says you cannot see afar off. If you fail in these things, you cannot profit from this word that God is sending to you. He said, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. The making of that calling and election lies in you, not me. You know why? Every time attention focuses on you, and I think I've said it to us in this assembly before, when you are on stage, who is on stage? You are the one on stage. When you're on stage, you're on stage. It doesn't matter how many people are acting with you on the stage. When Sister Esther came here this morning to lead praise worship, how many people were leading praise worship with her? She was the lead focus as far as we are concerned. Wasn't it? Even though there are backups. You can imagine if one of the backups decided not to back up and she abandoned her own responsibility to be chasing after the backup that is not doing her work. What do you think will happen? No. Praise God. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? The challenges that you are passing through now are not beyond you. Am I too harsh this morning? Praise God. Am I sounding too harsh this morning? You are not looking excited. Sorry about it. But you know, I don't know how to deliver God's word to make people excited. It is rather for you to appreciate what God is saying to you. And that is why, if he hasn't told me, I will not tell you. Give diligence. All diligence. Everything within your power. Everything within your wisdom, within, within your understanding, heart to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. Patience comes before godliness. Be patient. Be patient. Impatience has made so many people to lose their destiny. Very beautiful example in the Bible. King Saul. You know what happened to him? He was waiting for Samuel. He was waiting for Samuel. He waited. He waited. And when he appeared, Samuel was not showing up. What did he do? He decided to do Things by himself. He applied wisdom. Is that not what you are you, you generation Z are applying today? You apply wisdom. What happened to his wisdom? The wisdom failed him. Human wisdom will always fail. It has been proven over time. Because the scripture says even the foolishness of God. Is better than the best of wisdom of man. The moment he finished offering the sacrifice, what happened? Samuel appeared. This morning, we were told about Brother Moses, the instruction that God gave him. But because of the bottled of experience he has had with his people, praise God. Because of the bottled experience he had with his people, he momentarily forgot to follow instruction. And what happened? He missed the point. Praise God. Brother Nehemiah is an example, a beautiful example. Nehemiah had the hand of the Lord upon him and he was ready to build. Shall we go straight to the book of Nehemiah? Chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands to this good work. But look at the next verse. But when Sambala the Horonite and Tobiah the servant and Ammonite, the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian had it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. 
but you have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. I wish we read the book of Nehemiah when we get home, because time will not fail us. I mean, time will not allow us to be able to take some important points. But I will paraphrase. After this encounter, Brother Nehemiah began to build. The people began to walk. But at the same time, what were the enemies doing? They were frustrating their plans. This so called Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, they still exist in many societies today. They frustrated them in so many ways. But did Nehemiah give up? It never did. He had so many excuses, so many reasons to give up. But he did not. Because if he had given up, the work wouldn't have been completed. If he had given up, the testimonies would not be full. If he had given up, we will not be talking about him as an experience today. And that is the same reason why you cannot afford to give up. If you give up now, what becomes of your testimony? If you give up now, how will you stand bold and declare that God is my help? If you give up now, how will you cry and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack? Yes. Circumstances are here to make you to faint. Circumstances are obviously making things to faint. But I have a good news for you. God has remembered you. Do you believe what I'm saying this morning? I said I have a good news for you. I said God has remembered you. God has heard your cry that you were crying in the corners of your room. The prayers that your lips only were moving like that of Hannah. And God is going to arise to defend you. I said God is going to arise to defend you. I want us to look at a few more scriptures and then I will put all that I've said together. James chapter 1. Verse 2. I think we'll just read all the scriptures together. And then I will come back to point them out. My brethren, verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, complete, wanting nothing. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which are great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, 
that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Let's pause a little bit. Can you give me another translation? New Living Translation if you have. You have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, after you have done the will of God, you will you might receive the promise. New Living Translation. Patient endurance is what you need now. So that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Can you just open your mouth and say, God, help me? There is no fool in town. There is no money. And yet you say we should patiently endure. For how long? I don't know either. And you will continue to do God's will. Yes, please. How possible is that? How easy is it? It doesn't have to be easy. It doesn't have to be possible. It doesn't have to be straightforward. It doesn't have to be the way you plan it. As long as it is God's will, you continue to do it. So, so then, you will receive all that he has promised you. That is why it's amazing when people who, who, when some people are praying and are saying, God, remember the way I fasted. God, remember the way I prayed. God, remember the way I paid my tithe. God, remember... Sorry, there is no end point. You will continue. Psalm 27, verse 14. Please give us Psalm 27. Father, thank you. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and you what? He shall strengthen thine heart. What did he say again? Wait, I say, on the Lord. You keep waiting. You keep waiting. You keep trusting him in the process, in, in the point of waiting. You are waiting. You are not waiting and being high do. No, that's not what we are talking about. I'm sure some people, if pastors say, go to church and wait for me, we'll just come to church and carry church and sit down and be browsing on our phone. That's not waiting. You are in the church, you are waiting, but there are one or two things to do and you are doing it while waiting. Somebody said, if you are waiting on the Lord, then do what waiters do. What do waiters do? They serve. They wait on you, right? When you press a bell, they are around. What do you need? How may I be of help? Give me cold water. She brings the cold water. Oh, you know, I just changed my mind. I don't want cold water again. I want, I want room temperature. Then she goes back and brings it. Well, you, guess what? The, 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 the time you are taking that cold water, I just realized that it's also good. Bring it. She will bring it again. No complaining. They do it for earthly reward. How much more? Doing the will of our Father for heavenly reward. May this word profit you. I can't tell your amen. I said, may this word profit you. May this word mix with faith in your heart. In the name of Jesus. For yet a little while, Hebrew 10, 37. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. What did the Bible say? 
So also, Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. How did Jesus get to that position? Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, no, verse 2, sorry. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Firstly, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Give me New Living Translation for that firstly. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. Think of all the hostilities he endured from civil people. Then you won't become weary and give up. I love that. Think about it. Every point you are about to give up. Ask yourself, what if Jesus had given up at the Garden of Gethsemane? Every time you get to the elastic limit, ask yourself, what if Jesus had given up on the cross? And I said, wait, 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 this is too much. You know, till today, some people do not believe that Jesus was crucified. It was, the pain was so excruciating. It was, they, they said, God is not that wicked that he will allow someone to pass through. So, that what God did was just to hide him. Praise God. But God didn't hide him. He went through those pains. Those agonies. So that you and I will not go through them. Then you say, Pastor, but I'm going through pain. I'm going through agony. Yes. It is just for a little bit more time. Just for a little while. Your testimony is around the corner. And you will live to share it in the name of Jesus. Trials and tribulations are necessary ingredients to help you to build your faith and to build your patience. Yes, you have many things to achieve. But I'll tell you the truth. If your hope is in God, it will sustain you. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible says, Hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that is given unto us. Hope maketh not ashamed. Tell yourself, I will hope in God. Can you say it louder? I will hope in God. I will not fail. Every time your faith begins to fail, ask God for help. He said he has given unto us how many things? All things that pertain unto life and to godliness. Hey, that alone should excite you. Because you have what it takes already. What do you need to be able to persevere? To be able to hold on in the midst of these circumstances? What do you need? You need grace, right? Don't you? But have you read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9? What is in 2 Corinthians 12, 9? He said unto me, My grace is what? Sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. What do you think you need? You need his help. He said, yeah, I will help you. I will hold you with my right hand. 
Is that in your Bible? The Lord is my help. Is that in your Bible? What do you think you need? You need is peace. If only I can just have peace. Have you read John chapter 14, verse 27 before? John 14, 27. Can you open it in your Bible? Can you read it loud? Do you have a Bible? Everybody wants to go. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Do you believe this word? It's peace he has given unto us. The devil can only harass you if you allow him. He doesn't have the privilege. You also have the testimony of the head that has gone by. You've had many people sharing testimony of how God helped them. We have read some in the scriptures today. And more importantly, you know you have the Holy Ghost. Right? Do you have the Holy Ghost? So you have all things. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Can we read that Romans 5, 5 again? And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by who? By the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Okay, if you have all these things, what then do we need? Yes, I know you need more grace because grace is without limit. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. I know you also need peace. And that is why Brother Peter prayed for you. Do you have Second Peter in your Bible? Grace and peace be what? Be multiplied unto you. So when you are praying and you are saying, God, I don't want addition of grace, I want multiplication, you are praying according to the scriptures. I have peace, but I need more. Lord, multiply peace unto me. But he said you have those things through the knowledge of God. What else do you need to be patient and to hold on? You need focus. You need to be focused. Psalm 27 verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Acts of Apostles, Paul said, I know whom I have believed. I know what he has told me. He said, For I know it shall be as he had told me. Everybody was afraid. He told the sailors at the beginning. They did not listen. They were going to be shipwrecked. At a point, they were planning to kill all, to kill all the prisoners. And he told them, he said, you better eat. There will be no loss of life, but there will be loss of this ship. Because I know whom I have believed. I know it will be as he had told me. Do you know who you have believed? Then focus. Focus on that assignment he has committed into your hand. Your assignment is interceding. Focus on it. Your assignment is on evangelism. Focus on it. Your, fo your assignment is on waiting on the brethren. Focus on it. Whatever he has told you to do, do it. That was what Sister Mary told those people. And they got the, the first miracle from Jesus. Whatever he has told you, do it. Every other thing is a distraction. 
The enemy is good at distracting us. And if we are gullible, we will follow him. May the Lord have mercy on us. Are you still with me? Or you are tired already? Time won't permit me to say many things. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. What else do you need to do? You don't just have to focus alone. You have to be determined. The scripture says, if you hope for what we we'll see not, then we with patience wait for it. You have to make up your mind that on this journey I will not let go. I will not allow the devil to shoot me. What else do you need? You need to continue in service. Like I said before, if you are waiting upon the Lord, yeah, then do what waiters do. Zechariah and Elizabeth never stopped serving God. In all their years, they never stopped. And finally, what do you need this morning? For this session, I'm saying finally. Because the Holy Spirit is going to help me to give you more understanding. Live a life of praise. Yes, you have been praying. You have been fasting. Live a life of praise. The devil doesn't have power over true worship. When you engage in true worship, and I bet you know that when I mean when I say true worship, I'm not talking about singing alone. When you worship God in spirit and in truth, God Himself comes down. In your trials, in your tribulations, in the challenges that you are facing, worship God. Worship Him. I don't know what it is this morning that is threatening to make you to give up. To you wanting to give up. I don't know what you want to give up on. But I tell you this morning, the Lord is interested in your case. Don't give up. Can you tell somebody beside you, don't give up? Say it louder, don't give up. Give him that instruction, don't give up. You really don't have to. Keep keeping on. Your testimony is around the corner. Just hold on a little bit more. Finally, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 14. I say again, wait. It will strengthen your heart. Rise up on your feet this morning as we close this session. Thank you, Jesus. Do you still have any reason left to give up? Do you still have any other reason to give up? Can you just say, God, help me this morning. I won't let go. That woman with long-standing ailments, bleeding continuously, decided if I can just lay hold of the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Our faith mixed with that word. 
and she was made whole. What are your challenges this morning? In which area were you planning to give up? Can you speak to that area this morning? You are about giving up concerning your work. You are about giving up concerning your business. You are about giving up concerning your home. You are about giving up concerning the promises God has made for you. Concerning marriage promises. Concerning breakthrough. I don't know whatever breakthrough you have been trusting God for. You are about giving up concerning your head. You are, you are about giving up concerning whatever it is. Can you just lift up your heart and say, Lord, I'm going to hold on to you. Open your mouth and begin to pray this morning. Lord, I won't let go anymore. You are, going, you, oh, you are about giving up concerning your promotion. Can you just say, God, I'm not going to give up again. You are about giving up concerning your children. Can you just say, God, I'm not going to give up again. Lord, I won't give up anymore. Lord, I won't give up anymore. Help me, Lord. Help me to persevere. Help me to be patient. To be patient in trouble. To be patient in tribulation. This is a virtue that you have given, that you have called me to. The virtue of perseverance of, and patience. Lord, help me this morning. Let's kapuko zonto lika, lika puko zonto lika tria pekazo. Me kazenke shika praga zentele. You are in this meeting this morning. Everything around you is so cloudy. And you don't even know what to do anymore. Would you want to come to the altar as our senior pastor pray with us this morning? And say, Lord, I need you to help me in the midst of this confusion. You are in this meeting this morning. You know very well that you need God's help. Would you be bold enough to come out to the altar? As our senior pastor pray with us this morning. That the grace that we need. That the strength that we need. That the... the, the Whatever it is that we need, that the Holy Spirit will help out this morning in the name of Jesus. you to sing that to yourself, sing it unto the Lord. I'd like you to go on your knees and stretch your two hands unto the Lord. Lord, I'm looking unto you. If anybody can do it, it is you, oh God. Oh Lord.
Our dear Father, this, your children have had your voice and they have responded to the help that is in your name. Oh, your word say the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Lord, they have come this morning in the mid multitude of the challenges that they are facing. And they have chosen, Lord, to put their trust in you for help. And so, Father, the Egyptians that they see up until today, they shall see them again no more forever in the name of Jesus. His word says, fear not, I will help you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will uphold you by the right hand of my righteousness. So shall it be from today for you in the name of Jesus. The help of the Lord comes into your life. Right now you see help. Right now you see help. God will carry you over. He will take you over. And you will testify of his goodness. You will testify of his mercy and of his loving kindness. Who are thou great mountain before Zerubbabel? Today you become a plain in the name of Jesus. Because the name of the Lord remains a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. To this morning you find safety in the name of Jesus. You find salvation in the name of Jesus. You will leap over your wall. You will leap over your wall. And you will break through the truth. All the glory will be unto the Lord. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you because you have done it. No man will share your glory. All the glory will be yours alone. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.